Hi guys! Today I'm doing my book review of Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. So, um, this is just going to be a review, not a discussion, um, and I am going to have a short review because I don't want to spoil this book for you at all because it will ruin it. When I first bought this book, uh, when I've heard about it, I thought it was kind of like a fantasy along the lines with Throne of Glass, A Court of Thorn Thorns and Roses, and um, I don't know, The Queen of the Tearling. I was wrong. It's a sci-fi and it's a good one. It's along the lines with like Divergent and The Hunger Games, but it's better. I honestly think it's better than The Hunger Games and Divergent put together. But then, on a side note, I guess when you really like a trilogy or a series and they, it becomes really really big and it becomes you know film and everyone starts liking it even the people who don't usually read and they've read it and you feel like because it's become so famous you love it like everyone else but then I don't know you don't feel special anymore for liking it does that make sense and then you obviously read other books and I often feel when I read books uh, that the latest one I've read is one of the best ones I've ever read and then it's sort of just like each book I read just gets better and better and better and the books you read like two years ago aren't as good anymore just because you've read other books that are great doesn't mean they've gotten any worse you haven't changed your opinion you've just read some new amazing books so naturally I feel like this one's beats in Hunger Games and Divergent even though if I read Divergent again it's probably gonna be like top-notch you know so um yeah I'm not saying they're bad books, I'm just saying this book is awesome too. Like Hunger Games and Divergent, this is a society which is sort of split. While like in Hunger Games, the society is split by districts and in Divergent they're sort of split by their factions, this one is split by blood. So there are red bloods like you and me, normal people, red blood, um, they're just normal people. Um, they're the sort of poor people in this situation, they're not well off at all. They uh, do all the work and they live in slums. Our main character, Mare, is one of those. Then there are the Silvers. They're literally known as Red and Silvers. The Silvers um, are people with silver blood. Their blood is silver, literally. Um, it's sort of cute because they blush silver as well. Oh, I, I, I kind of like that. But the Silvers have sort of superhuman strength, sort of like godlike gifts or abilities, if that makes sense. It's everything from mind reading to um, fire, water, air, earth, uh, to controlling metal. Literally, there's superhuman strength, invisibility. There's just loads and loads of different um, abilities and powers. And when you read this, you're like, do they never end? They just keep coming. And there are things that you've never really sort of considered to be powers, but they are, and you're like, oh, why are you so clever? So the world is ruled by Silvus, and that is sort of the royal family, or the elite, uh, merchants, just rich people, posh people. Um, it's also ruled by the royal family, so you don't have sort of politicians and all that jazz. Obviously there are richer Silvus, sort of um, royal families and, and such, and then there are um, less well-off silvers but they're all well off they're all like on top of reds there is nothing worse with being a red then there are reds with sort of apprenticeships that are um get a good job and um can earn good money for being a red a sort of okay money and they can work for silvers if they're very skilled like mess sister for example um is very good with embroidery so she's um, got an apprenticeship and she's working to sort of decorate the um, silver's clothes and outfits. However, um, if you don't have one, you sort of go straight into the army at the age of 18 and you're pretty much screwed because who survives the army? Now, Mare obviously has a special gift or she's different than everyone else and so um, she is sort of... Um, captured or taken by uh, the royal family um, to live in their castle and marry their youngest son, Maven, and um, become part of the Silvers, even though she is a red, which causes a lot of complications. And this is because they're afraid of her and they don't want to let society know that she exists. They're afraid of her and therefore they've sort of 
chosen to hide her in plain sight in front of everyone um, as a long lost princess um, with silver blood, even though she's a red blood. It's absolutely, it's a lovely little book. Um, there's a little bit of a love triangle there. It's not massive, but just, you know, I'm team Cal. And what I really like about this book is that there are so many diverse characters. There is no character which is completely good or completely bad. In a lot of books, the, the main character obviously has a lot of layers to him, or there is one character in specific that you thought were bad but is completely bad, or you thought were good but turns out to have a bad side. Um, there's so many characters in this one though that isn't completely good or completely bad. Um, and they've all got layers and everyone sort of has a teeny bit of goodness for at least the people they care or they're just not entirely bad. Like, you've got to read it to understand it. But what I mean is that even our main character here, who is the goodie and who we all love, has moments when I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? But what I'm saying is that everyone doesn't have amazing thoughts and feelings all the time and sometimes you sort of question all the characters because you're like is he good is he not or like what the hell has just happened to him or her like get back to your old good natured person so I absolutely love this book truly truly love it I'm, I'm so happy I've come to read it um, I know a lot of you have already read it. I know a lot of people read it in one sitting, which I completely understand. I read it in two days. Um, the sequel is also amazing and uh, there will be a review and discussion on that later. Um, there will be a discussion up on this where we can really spoil it and talk about every aspect of it. But if you have not read this book, do not watch the discussion. Um, it's just not, it's not good. Don't do that don't don't do that at all um if you're going to read this book try to stay away from social media or any uh platform which may spoil this or even mention it even this video is too much don't watch this anymore turn it off i don't know just sit down read it and w without any influence from anyone else or any foreknowledge you want to have a open mind and just don't want to know anything about it before you're reading it. And then you could just make someone else read it and discuss it with them. Or, you know, watch my discussion video and comment below what you think of it. And we can have a little chat. Written review is coming up on the blog. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Great. Also, side note, there needs to be more fan art from Red Queen. Because I love going through Google Images and Pinterest and just looking at all the fan art. But there isn't enough and you're probably like, just do your own fan art. Um, I don't have the required skill. I just like to see some Marin Cal images because they're probably super cute. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. Bye for now.